now, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak faces fresh Tory turmoil as more Conservative MPs are set to quit. Peter would know this than before the 1997 landslide defeat. Well, it's 57 Conservative MPs have so far revealed they will stand down at the next general election, many fearing, you'd assume, that they'd lose their seats. Absolutely. However, the announcement of resignations uh, amounting in a mass exodus of Tory MPs has exponentially risen since the appointment of Sunak, including four in the last week. So we're joined now by former Justice Secretary David Gork to discuss uh, more about this. David, good morning. Happy <laughs> Valentine's Day. How are you, my friend? Good morning. Good to be with you. Uh, so, 57 and far more under Rishi Sunak's watch. Your colleagues are, with the greatest respect, jumping ship before the ship sinks, would be the overall view. Yours, David? A little bit of that. I think it's actually now 58, but um, I, it, it's a little harsh to put it all on Rishi Sunak. Obviously, as you get closer to a general election, that's the point at which sitting MPs are likely to announce they're standing down. Um, and there will be a variety of reasons why people want to leave Parliament. But when you look at those numbers, some of it has to be because of pessimism about the result at the next general election. Some don't want to be defeated. Um, some don't want to go into opposition uh, because opposition is a much less interesting um, and satisfying place to be than being in government. So it, I think it does reflect uh, uh, lower morale and pessimism about the next general election for, for various reasons. You've been there. Look, it's, it's a job that is so hard fought for, becoming a, a member of parliament or sitting uh, in the cabinet. What are you weighing up when you say, do you know what, I, I'm going to go before I think the job's removed from me? Yes, although in my case, it wasn't, um, it, it, it wasn't a voluntary decision. It was decision. over principle, was, yeah. Uh, but there were principles. But yes, look, it's a difficult one because it's an all-consuming job. Um, you know, it, it 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 takes up a lot of your time. Uh, you you you, if you like, you you sort of almost define yourself by the role that you're playing. And as you rightly say, yeah, you know, it's, it's really hard to get into the position. You know, it takes a lot of work to become a member of parliament. Um, but because it's also all-consuming. Um, you know, if you want to, you want to spend more time with your family. If you want to go out and you know earn more money, there are there are you know better and easier ways of uh, earning a living. Uh, and you know, some people will say, reach the view that they've kind of achieved all they're going to achieve in politics. And, and David, if I could just jump in, I mean, I, we can we can say you know people, as you quite rightly adhered to, you know, they don't want to lose, they want to go and earn extra money, they want to do this, that, and the other. I would think there's a, a, a part of... I mean, look at what happened to Tobias Elwood's family overnight. 100 demonstrators. We repeat on this station, people should be able to protest, but intimidation of young children is absolutely wrong and shouldn't happen. And you look at what happened to David Amos. You look about what happened to Joe Cox. I would suspect that many people think, what the hell am I doing this for? Maybe politics has changed so dramatically that, 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 that people have less of an appetite, and who could blame them? Yeah, I think it, it, it can become really difficult, particularly if your families are involved. Yeah. I, I was fortunate in terms of escaping all of that, but but I do know former colleagues. I mean, I was talking to uh, actually a Labour MP uh, recently who has received you know a lot of death threats. Um, you know, the, the the some of the pressures partly created by social media, um, the level of scrutiny, the level of criticism be can become pretty wearing. And, and I, I do think, you know, it's easier for me to say this now as a, as a former member of parliament, it is, is that sometimes the sort of culture that's created by a, a, by a small minority in the public uh, about MPs and the sort of cynicism about, you know, how they operate and, uh, and, and sometimes the sheer aggression directed towards them is really damaging for, uh, you know, how our politics works and can drive good people out of politics, you know, and, 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 and that has to be a, a worry. And I don't think that was the case a generation or so ago. David, undeniably, confidence in the Conservatives has been rocked if we look at uh, the public polling and what, what people are anticipating might happen in a general election at the, the end of this year. It seems to me in the Conservatives, you've got sort of two camps of people, some who think, do you know what, I'm not going to have my job uh, by the end of the year if I'm to believe the polling as it stands right now, so I want another option. But then there's another camp of people who seem to be ideologically arguing within the party about, well, if they lose at the election, 
if they want to be involved Sorry, to try I and say... reshape what it what it might look can like. Can I say something? I absolutely agree with you, but David, with respect, it's not. There's about 57 different groups fighting over ideology within the Tory Party right now, not just a couple. Wouldn't that be fair? Yeah, I think that that is fair. Look, there, there is an expectation that the Conservatives are going to lose. You only have to look at the opinion polls to see that that is uh, highly likely. Um, there are some who are, if you like, just a sort of in despair, and, and, and many of those are deciding not to fight. There are some who are very focused on what happens afterwards. Um, and and the, uh, the direction the Conservative Party goes in. And, you know, for example, some of these calls for Rishi Sunak to go, I don't think anyone particularly expects Rishi Sunak to go this side of a general election. But what people are wanting to do is blame Rishi Sunak for an election defeat so that they can then go off in a different direction, usually moving quite radically you know, further to the right. Uh, and and yeah, that battle is already happening. People are positioning themselves. But David, with respect, Rishi Sunak, Rishi Sunak wanted the job and the Tory party is far worse off under his leadership in terms of the polling and the problems. And I just want to go back to what you said about scrutiny and, and, and individual MPs, and I get it, and I think Tobias is a good friend of the show, and I hate that. I said it earlier, and I think that anything that impacts on one's family or one's mental health is wrong. But you would also perhaps flip that, David, and go with scrutiny, be it through the press or through social media. I'm afraid it's fair to say that so many of our MPs, I don't include you on this, have not come out smelling of roses in terms of their professional behaviour, their personal behaviour, and it's li literally shone a light on how much and how many problems there's been in the past few years in the House of Commons. And I guess the public want to know that. My view is about the general election, I'm not bothered about sitting here and saying who will win. I fear that politics in this country, people are losing interest because of the way politics is going. And that, for me, is a tragedy because I think we should all vote and we should all have a say. But I think people are being turned off, David. I really do. Well, look, I think the first point is, of course, um, MPs will face scrutiny. They should face scrutiny. We're a democracy. That's how, how it works. I think there are times where it, 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 you know, that there is a, a level of intrusion and indeed aggression that I think is is a problem. Um, I, I think most MPs are genuinely dedicated, uh, hardworking, wanting to serve their constituents. There are clearly some MPs who have uh, who behave badly, and, and and it's right that that is exposed. But your your sort of point about the public mood, I think, is right. I think there has, to some extent, there's been a bit of a decline in civility within politics. I mean, it's always been robust, and it should be robust. But you know, sometimes we have seen allegations thrown around which are you know over the top and, and unfair and and you know both major parties are, are, are guilty of doing that um but yeah there i think there is a sort of sense that our politics is not working as it should be at the moment um you know frankly i think you know politicians have got to you know be prepared to sort of set out uh the challenges the country faces a sense of optimism as to how we address it but also recognizing there are trade-offs no easy answers um, there's a degree of populism in our politics at the moment, which I think is really damaging for uh, the country. Uh, and we've got to kind of move answer, on. David do, do you miss it? At one level, I do. At another level, uh, being outside <laughs> politics has a lot of um, a lot of compensations. So uh, I'm not complaining. I had a good run. Uh, I was an MP for 14 years and a minister for nine of them. Um, so uh, you know, life moves on. But but look, you know, being a politician, being a minister, being able to change things, having responsibility is an enormous privilege. Mm. Uh, and I was very lucky to have that. Good man. Thank you, David. Thank you so much for talking to us. Former Justice Secretary David Cork.